And what I'm gonna talk to you tonight is the, the topic is what is genuine revival? What is genuine revival? And the irony of conferences like this, a revival conference, uh, the conference itself, and I think Greg would agree, the conference itself is not necessarily a revival. What you're doing, like a farmer, you're plowing the field. You're preparing the hearts. You're getting Christians ready for the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. You, and you have to till the soil. I used to rent heavy equipment, and I would rent a big, large John Deere backhoe or excavator, and I would tear up the ground. I would tear up the soil. In order for something to be built, you have to tear up that soil. And that's what these t types of conferences are for. But what is genuine revival? We need to talk about that for a, for a minute. And it was said many times today throughout the day. But I want to remind you that revival is God reviving his people. It's God reviving. It, it, I, I love evangelism. I love people coming to know the Lord. I love people repenting. But that's not revival often. That, that's an outworking of revival. Revival is God, wilt thou not revive us again that what we may rejoice in you. God is reviving his people. And what happens when he revives his people? There's a revision, not a revision, I should say, but a revival of truth, of holiness, of the, these things we don't want to talk about anymore, but they are pivotal to the Christian faith. There's a revival of truth, a revival of holiness, a revival of brokenness and humility. So I want to just throw out a few things to you tonight where you can think about it. I want you to take this test and be honest with yourself and with God because he knows is worship dry and lifeless to you? Are you just giving God lip service but not, is there, there's no heart engagement? Is there restlessness? Is there, is there looking and searching but not finding? And you know there's something wrong, something more, but you can't quite put your finger on it. The, the Bible is not living and active, it's dead and boring. So what's, the, the, the Bible is living and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. So the problem is never with the word of God. The problem is never with God. The problem is within the human heart. We have to look within. Isaiah 64, I love this verse. Many of you know it. Oh, that you would what? Rend the heavens, that you would come down. I love that verse because it's talking about would you rend? You know what he's saying is would you rip heaven open? My God, we need to rip heaven open. There needs to be a desperation. There needs to be a downpour of God's spirit. And we need to pray like the, the, the prophets, would you rend the heavens? Would you come down? And when God comes down, like the brother just prayed, there is a burning fire. The prophet said, I have this fire in my heart like a burning fire. I'm weary of holding it back and I cannot. Why? Because I've been set on fire by the living God. God and that fire cannot be contained it must go out it must burn not not physically burn but but spiritually burn in the hearts of others and you want to see revival you want to see God being honored again that's one thing that I have a concern with the direction of our nation is God is mocked and that's not a good spot to be whatever a man soweth he will reap we need revival we need renewing we need restoration Isaiah 57, 15, for this is what the high and exalted one says, he who lives forever, whose name is holy. Remember that, God is not, his number one attribute throughout the Bible is not love, it's holiness. We should walk in here with fear and trepidation and, and, and being in the holy presence of God. Even the angels cry, holy, holy, holy. Isaiah said, I, I'm a man of unclean lips. I, I, I dwell among a people that are unclean as well. And I saw the train of his robe. It filled the entire temple. And as he spoke, as the angel said, holy, 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 that temple began to shake and the presence and the power of God will come down in that place. That is revival. But there has to be a desperation it says, I live, God says, I live in the high and holy place, but also with those who have a contrite and lowly spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly, to revive the heart of the contrite. I will revive the brokenhearted. I will restore the humble. Those who humble themselves in my presence, I will lift them up. I will exalt them. But if you exalt yourself, I will abase you. Be careful, Christian. This can creep in in our lives. Worship team, Pastoring, preaching, be careful. Is it about self-exaltation? Because God's not in any of that. He's in humility and in brokenness. He'll, he'll revive that person. Wilt that not, will thou not revive us again? 
And I can't imagine going through life without the heavens not opening. Could you imagine? Could you imagine being a Christian and knowing nothing of the presence and power of God? Folks, that's in the majority of our churches. That's why church attendance now on a national level is maybe once or twice a month. See, I remember when the church prayed. I remember when we weren't in a hurry. I remember when people saying, what time are you over? They'd say, how long are we going? Because that revival fire, when the fire of God is in you, you can't shut up. You're not in a hurry. You want to be with God, not Netflix. You want to be with God, not Facebook, not social media. God is that all-consuming fire. 